Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. This is our bandsaw series. This is a new hairstyle just for Jeff. Ignore that if you can. So this is my favorite. This is the model number 490. And this is the la I, I think this was the uh, one that General probably made the longest. Um, great machine, 15 inch. But when I open it up and show you, it, it's, everything is really simple. There's nothing complicated to this. So there's your cast iron wheels. I often thought when I looked at it, I said, wow, they could have made that even bigger if they had the capacity on the inside. But again, it's got your blade tension that I completely ignore. Uh, what's different about this one? I like the fence. Again, it's a simple rip fence, but it, it works well. Um, the blade guides. Let's move this up. This is, they use rollers on this one. So there's bearings on both sides and then a thrust bearing in the back. Now, the only reason I don't like these is because if you're dealing with a resinous wood, as you can see, this has already, it gets gunked up, pine in particular, and then it makes a lot of noise because it, it, the, uh, it builds up on the sides of the blade, it builds up on the bearings, and then instead of it just barely missing, it starts making contact and it just screams and yeah, whatever. Underneath, same setup, you can underneath here, Jake, you can see it a lot easier. Everything's open. The only difference down here is you don't have the thumb screws to adjust. You got to move them and then lock them with your Allen screws. You've got an adjustment for tilt. So we can go 10 degrees. 10 degree. Or you got to, you got to, where is your, yeah, you got to remove that pin. But you, it allows you to go 10 degrees that way. And then, of course, you got your 45 degrees this way. Locks in place, nice and solid. Everything's just scaled down, but for a home shop, it's ideal. You see what I mean by, look at this, uh, I gotta go in there. Remember the other one that had the little brush cleaning it off? So here's what I'm talking about. You see how this stuff gets caked on the, on the wheel? I gotta go in and scrape all that off. And then it gets caked on the side of the blade. We're gonna change this blade out anyway. Uh, here's your dust collector. I actually had, this was a plastic board. I had, uh, I had Wolford make one out of metal because the plastic one had broken. And that, it, that leaves a lot to be desired. As you can tell, we run it when we're using it, but still you get a lot of sawdust built up in there. So it's a vacuum cleaner sucking on that great big area. So it doesn't do that great of a job. I'll make one of my little ones for up in there sooner or later. Um, here's your pin to tie your to tie your two tables together. It's just a little bit of a taper on there, so slide that in. It holds everything flush. Uh, back here, you've got uh, this would be a later model, so they they went away from those. You remember when I showed you those cast iron four knob ones? They've got a plastic one on there, but again, it's really simple. Lo loosen. There's your locking knob, and then this moves your top wheel in and out so that you can adjust your tracking. There's your tension. Here's your means of lowering and raising your guides. Simple machine. They just clip in place. But it's heavy duty, well made. We added, we added the clip on there for the lamp. And that's, uh, we actually, this is the first one we've actually had on so we could show you, but it's great to be able to come in there, especially when you're trying to find a, trying to follow a pencil line on a dark piece of wood. It's awesome that way. All right, so let's go through and actually take the blade out and put a new blade on. I'm gonna take the rip fence off and undo this too, just so it's not in the way. Open this up. I'm going to pop the. Now we had this added on. This is not stock. Wilfred did this too, and he put in a couple little copper pins to hold that in place a little bit better. We'll put it down here. Take that out. Take the tension off. Gotta work your work around this, but I'll pull this down a little bit, makes it a little easier. And then th 
thread that through, just careful not to kink it. Now that blade still has some use in it, so I'll save it. Now, I'm gonna go get a new blade. Give me just a second, and then I'm gonna clean this all out too. This is the, uh, every time you stop and put a new blade on, if you just take a second and clean the wheels off, we'll go through and do all that. Just give me a second. Dust off the guide. Now I got a scraper, dull, meaning it hasn't been sharpened, and I'm just going to rotate that wheel by hand. Try to get all that gunk off of there. Now, the other thing I forgot to mention, what I like about this, is these wheels have a little notch cut in them. So when you replace the tire, it fits right down in there on both sides and it's a lot more convenient than trying to line it up and get it to run. You know what I mean? You're putting a blade on there and trying to get it perfectly even on both sides and a lot of times you glue these on. Okay, that's clean. Okay, now I'll blow that down one more time. All right, now I'm going to move, I'm going to take this guard off while we're setting this up so it's a little bit easier to see. I just want to scrape that off too. You could take this off of the solvent, but... That's clean. Alright, let me just get a screwdriver. put this back on before we use it, but it just makes it easier for filming. Okay, now I want to back this off. And back this off. Now I actually need to, I need to loosen these as well, so I need to even some more tools. I'm gonna to need a wrench and an Allen screw, Allen wrench for that. And the same thing down below, and more tools. All right, so hold that. By the way, that's a 530 seconds, and this is a 716, so I'm just going to loosen that. This is on a cam, so that's why the nut is essential to hold that in place. Allow that to move out of the way and we do the same thing down here so loosen that push the push the uh, that bearing back and I'll get this out of the way as well shoot can I do in there
Now, somebody asked me about blades. There's two that I like. This is Viking. This is a friend of mine, Mike, in Ontario. I've been buying blades from him for, for 20 years. And if you want contact information, somewhere on here there's a phone number down here. I think they have a website too. I just don't remember what it is. But there's the uh, toll-free number. And then the other ones I like are Starrett. And I picked those up at Woodcraft. Now, this is a 98 and a half. And that blade was 99 and three quarter, and I hope I'm going to be able to put this on there. Meaning, I don't know if I can make, I can drop that wheel down enough. We'll find out soon enough. Uh, somebody said difficulty in taking these things apart. And you can just peel that plastic back. That might have probably could have just come in there and scraped the back. You call that an unboxing video? I read somebody's comment about how they undo their, what they do on the big thick blades. They just throw it into a room and let it explode. Okay, make sure the teeth are going the right direction. They're heading down. Now, we have gotta lower this as low as we can get it. And hopefully we have the capacity. Thread this on. Oh yeah, good. That one actually, that other one might have been a little bit too long. Our tension goes. I'm not musical at all. And I'm sure there's some scientific way of doing this, but you just kind of get a feel for that's probably right about there. Now what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna spin this. I'll loosen the lock screw. I'm just going to spin this by hand, and I want that blade to run in the middle. And it is right now, but let me just show you how it would move. Sliding off to my right, and then I'll bring it back and just do it multiple times until I see it tracking right top dead center. That's good. Okay. Now I'll lock it. Now, most people would unplug it. I didn't. I'm going to turn it on and let it run for just a second to make sure. That's staying right on track. Give that a second to wind down. Make sure that it's not making contact with any of the guides so it's, I don't want that influencing it at all okay. 
day and that one. I might need a smaller wrench for that one. That's not in the way either. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to bring this thrust bearing up. And I'm going to, it's a little bit sloppy. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit, of, little bit of the tension on with the thumb screw so that it, it is closer to where it's actually going to be when the thumb screw pressure is applied. Now, I'll spin that a little bit. By the way, something else you should check. Find your weld. Where is it? I saw it a second ago. There it is right here. Just check the back of your weld. You don't want any bump on there. And if there was, you could go in there with the guide up and you could use a, an oil stone or something and run it on the back side to smooth that up. But I run my finger up and down there. That's nice and smooth. So it's not going to, in other words, you're going to get a bump. That's... Okay, so I'm just going to keep moving that in. All right, it's just barely starting to touch. So I'm going to lock that right there. And I've got to do the same thing on the bottom. I just don't have the convenience of having the, the uh, threaded advancement. I'm going to tighten that up a little bit. You might be able to see better over here, Jake. Or can you see from there? Okay, so they're both in position. So if I run those, I don't want it causing them to move, but I want it close enough that the minute you start to make contact, actually, you know what, that one's, that one could be a little bit closer. Now, when I start to cut something, I don't want the blade going that way, so it'll just start to make contact, and those bearings will support it. Okay, they both run right. Now we're gonna go in and we're gonna adjust these. So, if you want, you look over my shoulder, we're gonna have the front of the bearing just below the gullet. The set, other, each tooth is gonna be bent, this one is bent this way, the next one is bent that way, and I don't want to interfere with that. Take the set off and it's going to ruin the blade. So I've got to move this out. Oh, I've got to move over here. I want to open these up. Again, I've got to put a little bit of tension on there so it'll hold it where it needs to be. Okay, it's not making contact. So I'm going to move that out until the front edge of the bearing is just at the bottom of the gullet. Okay, now I'll lock that. Now I don't want them touching, and this one is. Actually, I was doing that wrong. This, this is the one that moves. How does that work? I should know, shouldn't I? Which one has controls the uh, movement side to side? This one. Okay, that's what it is. Yeah, that one's parked. So the the nut, the nut is the one that moves this. Uh, it's on a concentric, so it's going to move it closer or, or closer to or away from the blade. And then that center Allen screw that locks it down. So. I'll snug it up a little bit. Move it in a little bit more. 
Now if you wanted to, you could put a piece of paper in there, but I'm, I can see it and I'm just barely touching. So I'll hold that in place and I'll snug this up. Now the other one, do the same thing. Okay, so I can, I, I almost can't feel any movement, but I'm just clearing those enough so that the only time they're gonna touch is when you start to make a curve, the blade's gonna start to twist like that, and that's when the bearings will engage and they help to keep the blade positioned nice and straight. Now we gotta do the same thing. We gotta keep going. Let's, right, 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 this is a doozy. So we're going to get down here. I'm going to get this stuff out of my way so I can see. First thing I want to do is move that whole thing over until I get my bearings again. Wait a minute, I'm going to scrape the crud off of this. If you don't get that uh, caked on pitch off of there, it's going to screw up your setting. Okay. I almost wish I had my headgear on or a little more light. So I got to move that out a little bit more. that down. Now same idea here. I'm just going to take this off so I can see a little bit better. thing to the outside one. Pin in. I said that keeps the tables, the two halves of the tables flush. Put your throat plate in. Are you guys purple? No, wait a minute now. Go on 
this way. Whose idea was it to do little copper pins? Oh, pretty. Smart guy. Now you want this to be pretty snug because if that, uh, if that has too much play in it, then you make your adjustment here, but when you lift the guide up, it's no longer in adjustment, so. That is a big bit stiff to move, but that's the price you have to pay in order to keep it aligned. All right, let me give a piece of wood. We'll give it a quick try. And then we'll close this episode and I'll tell you what we're gonna do on the next one. All right, I'm gonna hook up the vacuum. Haven't decided where we're gonna actually park this machine yet. So when we do, we'll hook it up to the central dust collecting. Now, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut this handle out. So I, wanna, I want the guides to be just clearing okay so the closer I get that the better support there's going to be for the blade so when I'm going around these tight curves it's going to perform a whole lot better so I'll lock that in place the tables at zero got my dust collecting on my lamp now on our next episode I'm going to go through and we're going to talk about ripping and how you can set the blade or set the fence so that the blade runs true to it. If you're wondering why I use a quarter inch blade, it's because of the tight curves and uh, most of the woodworking that I'm doing now is making wood handled saws this is a piece of bird's eye I bought a bunch of round turning blanks somebody was had collected but was no longer using Nothing like having a ton of light. All right, we will see you on the next episode. And uh, ask your questions, and we'll try to get them answered.